Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civilization 6. Today, sadly for these three, I'm taking you through my biggest losers of the final update to the New Frontier Pass and potentially the final update to Civ 6. These civs, uh, one of them is good, this one, still good. The other two, eh, pretty bad. But either way, these three civs took the L in one way or another from the latest balancing update. Let's jump straight in to number three my third biggest loser, it's the Congo. Now, Congo, I believe, is still actually a reasonable sieve. Their bonuses have some synergy between uh, housing and food and, and culture and building a reasonable civilization up. However, there was a significant nerf to them that wasn't really made up for with their buff. It's small, but it matters. You no longer receive the 50% bonus for uh, one type of great person. It is, of course, the great writer. And that matters because the great writer tended to be the one that you would get first. And that tended to snowball into you getting all of the great writers. So we, when you were playing as Congo, it might sound like a small change. Right now it's received 50% more great artist, great musician, great merchant points not great writer points, but it really matters because you used to be able to snowball basically and just take the whole game and take all of the great writings because they're the first ones that you tend to unlock. Sadly, that's no longer, uh, and the plus one faith that they get now um, doesn't, doesn't make up for that. So Congo, you took a little bit of an L, but I'm going to let you past as still a reasonable sieve and I can't necessarily say the same for the rest. Let me move on to my second biggest loser. No, it's not Colombia, they're great. <sighs> it's Georgia. Tamar, Georgia. How are we doing? And why do you suck? Well, let's go through it. So, uh, their big change. Combat victories provide faith equal to 50% of the combat strength of a defeated unit. To some players, that sounds like, great, I can go out, fight some early conflicts, kill a couple of barbs, and get my faith game up and running faster than everyone else. But when you think about the numbers and you think it's half of their combat strength, maybe you're getting 10 faith, half of 20, which would be reasonable for an early game unit. You have to go out, you have to track them down, or declare war on somebody and fight them if you're not fighting barbs. It just doesn't. It's just not very strong. If you want faith early, play as Russia. Or, you know, there, like, there are so many other civs that you could play as if you wanted early faith. This just isn't enough. It's just not enough. Moving through the rest of what Georgia offers, I'm just not so hot on it, to be honest. The replacement to the man-at-arms is good. It is, but it's nothing to write home about, and it comes relatively late in the piece, so you can't even combo it with their faith bonuses early in the game. It feels like these things don't really click together very well. Uh, their unique building uh, is n it's not terrible. Uh, the trouble is it replaces Renaissance walls, so you have to build two other sets of walls first, and sure, the, the, the tourism and faith is nice, but again, nothing to write home about. And no real synergies or end-game plans for Georgia. Um, I mean, you know, up here, each envoy you send to a city-state with your majority religion counts as two. Great. I mean, that's a lot of work to put in for an extra envoy. And am I going for a diplomatic victory? Because it doesn't really feel like it with all of this other stuff going on. Uh, all in all, Georgia remains not a very good sieve. Not a very good sieve at all. Sorry, Georgia. I think you're a loser out of this patch. And frankly, probably not someone I'm going to be playing a game with anytime soon. However, the number one biggest loser out of this patch was England. And not just any old England. We're not bringing Victoria into this I'm looking square at you, Eleanor. Now, for those of you close to Civilization VI, you might say, hey, but England, Eleanor, she didn't really change that much, did she? The answer is no. No, she didn't, actually. That's the problem. 
Eleanor sucks, frankly. And she still does. Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking about French Eleanor. Culture game is great. Production game is good. She synergizes very well. English Eleanor, on the other hand, not so hot. The Sea Dog. Uh, I mean, it's a good unit, but it doesn't synergize with anything else that she does. At all. Not at all. I mean, sure, the Royal Navy Dockyard is good, yes, but we're probably not, if we're playing as Eleanor, necessarily going to build up a big army and go for a militaristic victory. Why is that? Well, I mean, Workshop of the World, it's a bit odd. There doesn't really appear to be a great deal of synergy. Military engineers receive extra charges. Buildings that provide additional yields when powered receive plus four. 20% production towards industrial zone buildings. I mean, these aren't terrible effects by themselves, but there's just a lack of synergy. Finally, with the Court of Love, great works in each of Eleanor's cities cause minus one loyalty per turn in foreign ones. Great. Do, do I have anything that helps me with that? No. A city that leaves another civilization due to loss of loyalty and is currently receiving most loyalty from Eleanor's civ skips free city and joins. Now that can be fun, right? You can play some fun loyalty things, but where's the rest of the loyalty synergy? There isn't any. Mapuche, who was one of my biggest winners, if you haven't watched my biggest winner video, shout out to that. Uh, check that one out on the channel. He has some great synergy. Eleanor? Nothing. It's like we threw some random things at her. And nothing happened. Now, why is she the biggest loser out of this patch? Because she did, wasn't buffed. She wasn't buffed. We didn't touch her. We didn't want to go near her with a barge pole. She received virtually nothing. And unfortunately for Eleanor, that means that Eleanor of England remains hot trash. Thank you so much for watching this video where I covered my three biggest losers out of the Civilization final update to the New Frontier Pass and potentially to Civ 6. If you enjoyed, please do drop a like and subscribe. Subscribing is one of the biggest things you can do to help out the channel, so I really appreciate that. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.